We will be working with JSON, mm -hmm. which means we will need to be able to decode it. Usually, if you use JavaScript, you will be just using JSON.parse. But if you use JSON.parse, the data structure you get back is not really uh, data structures. They do not map one to one with F# -sharp data structures. Yes. So a JavaScript array is not. It cannot be used as a um, as a, as an F# -sharp list. It's it's a it's a different it's a different data structure. An F# -sharp list is a is a is a linked list. So you can't just say, oh, I have this array. Please treat it now for me as a list. Mm -hmm. You will have to do some conversion. And this is where uh, JSON decoders come into play. JSON decoders are functional constructs. They're basically functions which are able to decode pieces of JSON. And put them together data. into a bigger one. Exactly. So if we have so we will be using something called uh, Thoth by Maxime. If you have, if you have, if you're not follow, if you're not following anyone from Fable community, please follow Maxime. He has great because stuff. then you follow him pretty much like fifty percent, no, forty percent, and then you, and then we have eighty percent, and no, no, I, I missed a lot of people, but it's basically at the moment. Sometimes it feels like people. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, Alfonso. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, Alfonso, man. <laughs> but still, um, at the moment, sometimes right. it feels like this. Yeah. All right. So we have something that is called a decoder. And when you read something that is called a decoder of T, it means that you have a function, because decoders are functions, it be, you, you have a function that can read a piece of JSON and gives you a T. Yes. Maybe. So we have the decoder of T, and you basically tell a bunch of decoders to work together to make up bigger decoders. Just yes. like functions, when there's, when you have uh, small functions, you combine them together to make bigger functions that return a more complex object. Mm -hmm. Like the if you're working with Thoth, of course, Thoth doesn't know about your own uh, user-defined types. You have to teach Thoth how to decode this thing by using primitive decoders that know that understand yes. the primitive the primitive fields so the primitive decoders item. is like what what is what is a thought made of right so and and, yeah. and the possibility yeah, the to actually decoders. combine those and um yeah have composition over the all these small decoders and and get yeah. a bigger type out of it yeah basically mm -hmm. that so let's uh, i think we already installed it so let's open up thoth dot json there nice uh, it's actually there's actually a .NET version for this, which is pretty cool. So if I have this thing, and I want a decoder of it, I want basically a decoder which is able to parse a piece of JSON into this Hacker News item record type. Mm -hmm. So I start like this. Let um, item decoder I will call it. I think Maxime recommends that you do static members, but for simplicity, I will just do it in here. I will say item decoder is a decoder of my type mm -hmm. and start implementing it. But even at this point, it's it's very um, it's already like what what you what you what you should read. This is how you should read it. An item decoder is something that can read that can read JSON and return you yes. this thing maybe. Yes. So because we have a record type, we have to be reading the record. I mean, we don't have to per se, but the the uh, the mapping between JSON and the F# -sharp type is coming from an object JSON that we want to map into this record type yes. because objects are like hashes, are like maps with name with, with predefined names, and a record is basically the same. So let me just write it and not talk too much because maybe the code makes it a lot more um, simpler. So we have all these kinds of uh, built-in decoders, for example, this decoder of byte that can read bytes, and this decoder of bool that could read booleans. But we could, what we want is we want an, a decoder of object because it can read um, a JSON object and map it to something else. So we have a, a decoder of objects, which takes a function. I will call it fields. I'm not sure what the what the um, uh, what the convention is. But it's basically a function which is which takes a fields getter. So this function, that it's an, it, take, it has a type I have I getters, 
which is able to decode the different fields of the object that yep. you're decoding. So I start with an object and I want to say this function takes the getter, the fields getter, and returns a hacking, hacking news item. item. Yes. So you will be needing an ID, you will be needing a title, you will be needing a URL, and you will be needing a score as well. So let's start with the first one. And when we have the fields, we could pretty much say, I want the ID field, I want the value for the ID field for my record to be coming from the fields. And it's a required field at the path. I think it's an array. It's a list. Yes, that's a list. Of ID. And then it, I'm saying here at when I'm when I have the my JSON object at the field ID, I want to use primitive decoder or a decoder. Yes. It doesn't matter whether it's primitive or not. I'm saying here, if you are working with the JSON object and you are at the field ID, I want you to use an integer decoder because I want to map to int here. And that should give me an integer back. Yeah, and I think what, what is also important to mention at this point is why is this a list? Uh, this is a list yeah. because um, this allows us to actually to actually give us a give a um, the decoder a path. And so if we have like a deeper structure where we have like, okay, this is some field, and in this case we have like the members and then we have the user whatever and in there we want to grab the id so this decoder then tries to 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 um to flatten basically yeah the to object. flatten this and and to access um from uh, this data from the json object so it tries to access members and then within members the user and in within this this uh, id and we say that this is actually required here at this point so yeah. yes what does that mean that is required? Um, it means that, that uh, we will get a result of um, error in the case that um, we don't have, or it, it can't actually find um, the value within this structure that we've given it, right? Exactly. So the nicest thing about, one of the nicest thing about Thoth is that, is the way we define how these decoders should work because we are already giving it information like that this thing is required and that it has to be an integer it will automatically generate really nice error yeah, messages definitely. when things are not yeah. uh, aligning to your types yeah. so if your type is like a is like a string and you said okay decode an integer it will say it's it that doesn't work because it's a, tr a string i'm not sure if Thoth internally tries to parse it, and if it works, then it says it's successful. I think I think Thoth is very strict in the sense yeah. that uh, if it's a, if it finds a string and it's looking for an integer, it will just fail because that it's not mapping well. Mm -hmm. I think you could define your own loose uh, your loose decoders, yeah. which are able to map to map from a string by try parsing the string into an integer, and if that fails, then you. Uh, error out with some other kind of error but for now the built-in integer will just fail it's very strict will just fail if you if it's not an integer mm -hmm. but in case it is so we will just uh, do the other ones as well also while you're right uh, to give credit where it's due i think I, maxime did a tremendous job with the thoughts thing and it's really nice and this, i think he's in in version three now or something um so it, it developed really nice but the the whole idea is coming from elm um the language itself where um these decoders are pretty much built into and i think he took the idea and and brought it in a really nice way um to f sharp nice and to, -sharp, to fable yeah, and 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 you you just glanced over this what i really like is that i mean we're only talking about decoding here now but there's also an encoding part where you say okay given this record this criminated union just um um, put this into this JSON structure, and because there is also a thoughts uh, JSON.NET part, you can use the same decoders and e encoders um, exactly. that you have defined. So you can actually share the code on your front end and on your back end. And so the front end part is then um, like um, transpiled to JavaScript, and and the back end part is it's just normal .NET code trend, uh, compiled IL, IL stuff, whatever, um, and it plays really nicely together. And it's I think it's really cool um, stuff that, that he did there. Yeah, it's really, really nice. 
and if you are um, if, if you're using it on the on the server and the client you could use them you can share them yeah that's really cool so we have something here that we can use so when you say okay you have the you have this decoder but how can you use it it's you cannot you cannot use it on its own. You have to have a function that actually makes use of it. So you don't use it directly. Mm -hmm. It will say, um, I will show you. If you have a parse item function, which takes a JSON of a string, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, JSON, I'll call it. Bad name, I know. Which is a string. I can say decode. Well, from the string, from string will take a decoder, in this case, item decoder, and a string, and it will give you a result of that item you wanted to decode, in mm -hmm. this case, hacker news item, or the error, that's yes. the string you get back. So we ha now we actually have a function that takes a string and returns you either hacker news item, a single one, mm -hmm. or a string. Yes, which is the which is the parsing error. 